to cut or not to cut? That is the question. Today we're going to answer the question whether or not to cut back your flower stalks on your Venus flytraps. Guys, welcome back to Green Farms Garden and another video. My name's Alex and if this is your first time here and you love gardening videos, horticulture and ornamental plant care, then make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you don't miss a single thing. So the decision whether or not to cut back your flower stalk really depends on two things. What do you want and is your plant healthy? Naturally, when a Venus flytrap flowers, they invest a lot of their strength in growing quite a large flower stalk. You know, look at the size of the flower stalks in some of these adult Southwest giants. They're nearly a foot long. The flower stalks try and be higher than the traps so that the plant doesn't accidentally kill the little fly that it needs to help it pollinate. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? So they use a lot of energy to grow these stalks and then to produce flower and to then produce seed. Now, if your Venus flytrap isn't healthy and you notice it's struggling, it's sluggish, it isn't doing great, then letting it flower won't be a good idea. It'll take its toll on already a struggling plant. In that case, it would be better to cut off that flower stalk and we'll do that on a couple of our Venus flytraps in a moment and let it rest that year from flowering and, and try and build up as much energy as it can in its rhizome and recover. But if your Venus flytrap is healthy, then letting it flower won't cause it any problems. Letting your flytraps flower can be a real rewarding experience. Being a part of and witnessing the whole cycle of your plant, the flowers are beautiful and they'll gift you with some free Venus flytrap seed at the end of it. Flytrap seeds can be quite expensive to buy and you don't get many. And sometimes germination rates can be quite slim if they're old seed. But what you'll get is fresh seed, which can be planted immediately for nice high germination rates. So that brings us to the first question, what do you want or what do you want to achieve? Do you want the experience of trying to grow Venus flytraps by seed and see what interesting typical plants you'll get? Each one will be slightly different. All the plants we've got here on the table are cultivars, basically clones from plants that have been grown for years and years. They're not seed grown where a seed grown plant will give you a, a typical Venus flytrap, what you'd find in the wild. And that could exhibit any kind of qualities from its parent plants. And that can be super, super interesting. But if you haven't got the patience for that, because growing a plant from seed can take years, unless you're doing tissue culture, which is a whole nother subject, a subject that I'd like to get into, by the way, if you're not interested in that, then you might as well go ahead and cut that flower stalk. Cutting that flower stalk is going to allow your plant to not waste energy growing that massive stalk and it'll be able to use that energy into growing fatter rhizomes, better sized traps, more divisions for when you come to repotting it. So when you know what you want, then you can make that decision. So if you do decide to chop off them flower stalks, don't waste that plant material. We can make flower stalk cuttings from them and you might have a nice little chance of making some more little clones of your favorite plant. Before we do, here's a brief word from our sponsor. Our sponsor is Mars Hydro. They make all kinds of full spectrum grow lights that can take your plants from the seedling stage right to flowering. The lights have the latest Epistar LED technology and for what they are, professional grow lights, they're very economical. So if you fancy a grow light, if you need one, check out the link in the description and maybe you can find what you're looking for. So come closer, let's chop off a few of these flower stalks and I'll show you what to do with them. So we've got a nice red Venus flytrap here. It's called Royal Red, the cultivar. And I've already let it grow too high. 
Um, I didn't really want it to get that tall. So we're just going to snip this as far down at the bottom as possible. We're just going to snip it off just like that. And we'll put that to a side. So we've got another flower stalk appearing here in our Southwest Giant. And that's about the ideal size when you should be chopping it if you want to make flower stalk cuttings. It's about two inches and that will do nicely. So we're going to snip him right down as far at the bottom as we can like we did the other one. Careful not to cut through any of the other leaves. So have a spare pot and we want to put keep a humidity dome on top to help them from drying out. We're aiming to keep the flesh of these stalks green for as long as possible to give the little stalks time to grow. We've also got it sitting in about five mil constantly of water and keeping this media quite wet. We'd never keep our Venus flytraps that wet normally, but there's no roots on this thing, so they have to be kept wet. We don't want them drying out at all. We're using long fibred New Zealand sphagnum moss. It's one of the best mediums for encouraging leaf pollens and flower stalks to grow because it does keep nice and moist. So take your flower stalks. We want to cut them about in half at that size. I'll cut that one in half as well. Then with a chopstick or a sharp um, pair of tweezers, make a hole. And then we just want to get them in and cover most of the plant as possible. So it's as simple as that. The only thing we have to do now is put this in a nice bright location. If it's too hot and too sunny outside, that'll not do them any good. Cause remember they ain't got any roots, but under your grow lights would be pretty sweet. That's where I'll be putting mine or a nice bright kitchen window that gets indirect sunlight, a nice place like what you'd use for your orchids and other plants like that. Don't forget to put the humidity dome back on top so it can help give it a higher humidity so the stalks don't dry out and survive as long as possible. It's all about trying to keep that stalk alive. Guys, if you found this video helpful, then make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and, and I'll see you next time.